So we're going to create a circular grid system. For this, we need two actors. So I'm going to make a new folder. Circular grid. First actor will be BP grid points. I'm just going to duplicate it and it's going to be BP underscore. Let's just call it uh, grid marker. Grid points. We just want to add a sphere. And I'm going to make it 0.3 in scale. And let's just make a quick material just so we can see it. Hold down four. Put that into base color. Give it a nice bright green. And then give it the color. Okay. Oops. So in grid marker, do a few things. So in the construction script, we're going to do a for loop. The last index from auto variable, I'm going to call this rings. We're then going to feed, this is how many rings of the circle you want around the middle. And we also need to add a um, something in the middle for the rings to form around. So I'm just going to use a cube and give it a one size is fine like this. We're going to make another for loop. I'm going to promote this last index to a variable. And we're going to give first index is one. The last index here is going to be the number of sides of the circle. This has to be, must be factor of 360. So if I just quickly open a browser, things like this, these numbers here, it has to be one of these. Otherwise the circle won't be complete and it'll look strange. Uh, so next we are going to actually, on the completed, we're going to create a new variable, which is a float. And we're going to call this radius, radius. We're going to set that on completed. From number of sides, we want to divide. The top number needs to be an integer, 360. The bottom, we want it to be a float. And we want to drag off here to, to float and then connect there. This will go into a multiply, the bottom pin of the multiply. The top pin will lead into the index. Next, we take the radius plus. We make a new variable, which is integer. This is if you want multiple rings, number of of rings. I spell that number of rings, and this is going to be multiplied by 10 and then I feed that into the plus. This then goes into the radius. So the next thing from this loop body, I'm just going to draw a debug point just so we can see it. From the uh, multiply here, Pull off and make rotate. Uh, no, make it make rotate. From here, plug into yaw. From make rotators, 
return get forward vector from the get forward vector multiply multiply that by the radius and then add it add to this object which is going to be the center point get world location and then add that to this okay so from here we can put this into here i'm going to give this a size of the 15 and it's going to be alive for 10 seconds so if we look now well this doesn't have any numbers in it at the moment so let's do five number of rings the radius will be 300 the number of sides will be 15 because that's a factor if we look at it now you can see we have this ring of circle this ring of dots if I say rings 10, now we have more rings. So the radius, if I say 50, makes it come closer. This updates not very often. That's the, the issue with it, using these dots. But it's a good way to see like a short thing. If I do this for like one second, there you go, you can see a radius 300. So now it's surrounding the object here. So see, it's surrounding the object and then going out. So that if you were to add more sides to 36, you would have even more to add. I'm just going to do 16 just to show. Okay. So what we do next is we go back to the construction and we want to do a new variable which is called grid coordinates. This has to be a vector. And it has to be a an array because we're going to store all these grid points into an array. We're going to take the grid coordinates. We're going to add this vector node here goes into the plus. So now we have a list of all the grid coordinates. So what we do to make it so you could use this as an, you can either use these grid coordinates as your grid. What I've done in my other project to work on is on begin play, we do a for loop for each loop. We take the grid coordinates, we do spawn actor from class i gave it the grid point actor split the spawn transform feed in the array element then compile so now if we drop this into the world this grid marker you can see the dots there and press play we spawn these grid points as actors in the world so then you could have your like top down game when you highlight one of these points and click like to place an object, you can just like replace this. You could use an interface to actually cast to it. It's like here you can see all the different points like. If we do again. I pull off this, you can see all the different points here. Just make sure like they're not overlapping. You can move this now because they've spawned in. So this allows you to have a set of locations with actors you can interact with, that you can click on them, that you can have a, a point in the world to do things from. So if I go in here and say, I want 20 rings, I want 
36 sides, the radius needs to be 75, number of rings, I want 10 rings, and then I play, and then now you've got a grid around, sort of like um, Frostpunk, but then if you add, if you want to add, say, multiple rings, you just drag another up. Oh, Drag another one of these actors over, press play, and now you've got two sets of grid markers. Obviously, you can optimize these by probably removing the, well, they don't really cost much, but you can remove like them from shadows. So if we do here and just say like no static mesh, then you won't be able to see them. So, uh, shad, like, don't cast shadows, don't do anything, just spawn in. And then you've got all these grid points ready to go. You can interact with, you can do whatever with. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you like it, like it. If you leave, if you don't, you don't have to watch. But hope this has helped you in some way. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.